Let's unpack those market movements now with Craig Pfeiffer, who is the Chief Investment Officer, or Strategist rather, at Sassfin Wealth. A very good afternoon to you, Craig. And let's start with the performance on Thank the you. JC today. Uh, not a very great start to the week. We saw the local boss uh, ending in the red. A lot of pressure coming in from the industrials today. Uh, what would you say were some of the other major contributors to the moves that we saw? Yeah, I think the um, overarching thing is the lower commodity prices. Uh, we saw commodity prices falling on Friday. Uh, so a lot of your, your bulk uh, commodity prices, your iron ores, your coppers uh, and the like were lower. Uh, your platinum group metals prices were lower. So that drove down much of, uh, uh, of the mining board. And uh, those are among the larger uh, cap companies on the index. So that's really weighed that down. Uh, amongst the green bits were um, you know, most of the, the stocks that were weak in uh, the previous month. Uh, all your SA Inc. type stops, your, your local stocks, um, your retailers, your banks, um, your telecom stocks, those had a bit of a recovery today, uh, but not enough to overcome the, the weakness in the, across the mining board. Mm. And let's talk about um, uh, 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 the, uh, well, Brent crude, rather, I wanted to focus on that, the rising price of Brent crude. There is some news uh, from OPEC Plus that came through. Um, your thoughts on the price of Brent crude? We are enjoying a bit of a reprieve when it comes to petrol prices come Wednesday, but one wonders if it's going to be short-lived. One suspects that it might be a bit short-lived, uh, looking at uh, the rest of the commodity uh, complex uh, and the weakness there. There does seem to be uh, you know, a bit of softness in China. One was hoping for a, a stronger recovery from them once lockdown, uh, all those lockdowns had been lifted uh, earlier in the year. But things haven't uh, you know, come along as, as fast and as strong as, as we'd all have liked. So that underlying demand is a little bit soft for commodities in general. Uh, and that's kept those prices or, or made them even go a little lower. Mm. So I throw oil into that bag as well. Uh, we've got OPEC, you know, trying to shore up prices by reducing production um, and even really, I think, trying to maybe pull the rug out from under some of those, um, those uh, I won't call them investors, maybe the speculators in, in the oil market uh, with their one million barrels per day cut. Um, but I think that might just be short-lived and at the end of the day, the, the price of oil will generally uh, and probably flow in line with uh, the, the prices of, of general commodities. Yeah, some company updates now, Craig. We start with Oceana. They're putting out uh, their numbers today um, and they're really showing that consumers are uh, really just being uh, uh, dragged because I suppose the economic circumstances to their Lucky Star offering, the tinned fish that they uh, offer as one of uh, their product offerings. And I suppose, like I say, it is a, a sign of the times in terms of where consumers are being directed because of the constrained pockets uh, that they have. Uh, but overall, what did you make of Oceana's numbers that they uh, shared with investors today? Yes, well, they were ex they were exceptional. I think they, yeah. uh, you know, the top line revenue was uh, was just under fifty percent. Uh, if you look at their bottom line profits, their earnings per share uh, was well over a hundred percent growth. Their dividend was up over a hundred percent, and uh, I think as they highlighted in their uh, results announcement, um, benefiting firstly from being a global company. Uh, exporting, uh, operating in uh, in the U.S., earning hard currencies, translating that into rands, uh, and we know how the rand has depreciated this year. Mm. So all of that helping, uh, but also getting you know generally their volumes on the uh, on the fish side were were pretty flat, but I think you know some efficiencies and that weaker rand are helping them at the end of the day, along with um, as you mentioned uh, you know consumers looking for an affordable source of protein. Um, and uh, that's the fare that uh, Oceana produce. So uh, a nice kind of double positive whammy for their results this time around. Yeah, indeed. And then we saw the competition tribunal late on Friday afternoon announcing that they're giving the thumbs up to clicks acquiring Sorbet. Uh, shareholders obviously are happy with mm. the developments around this. The share price are trading quite uh, comfortably over 2% today. Uh, your thoughts on this particular transaction and really just what it does to clicks uh, to uh, perhaps uh, give it more of a market a leader a presence within the space? Yes, health of beauty is what uh, what the company is all about. Uh, they have had a long relationship with Sorbet. 
uh, well, going back to 2015, they did own about a quarter of the of the business. Uh, but it fits in very nicely with uh, with the um, with their model of health and beauty. Um, we've been in there, I know, to get some sorbet nail polish for my daughter, uh, and uh, that that association is going to continue. Um, they're going to also, you know, build out. I think the franchises. It's good for the sorbet business as well. Uh, the 105 million rand that they that they're paying for sorbet. Uh, will get them, you know, the hundred odd outlets, but uh, it looks like they could then expand those, you know, more nationally uh, and build on the brand. So I think it's a win for Sorbet as a business uh, and for Clicks as well. It fits very nicely. Yeah, uh, and then Steinhoff update today, trading statement, of course, uh, headline earnings going to be decreasing quite substantially, they've reported today. Uh, but they're also dealing with a number of headwinds, you know, uh, the uh, the uh, the court case that they're approaching now because of the equivalent of business rescue in Europe. Shareholders not too happy about that restructuring plan, but lenders are saying we want our money back. And so Steinhoff needs to go into this form uh, of a rehabilitation. Uh, your thoughts? on this trading statement and I suppose what the future for Steinhoff looks like at this stage. Yes, well, it, it's a very <laughs> messy business and it's been messy for a long time. Uh, and I guess this is all about shareholders seeing if they're going to get 20% of the business or nothing. Um, the courts will decide how that plays out uh, and whether the creditors can get, uh, you know, an extended um, debt repayment holiday. Uh, so I think they'll all get to vote on it or at least, um, you know, voice their opinions from the creditor side, from the shareholder side. Uh, and then the judges will decide, um, you know, which way it goes. Uh, and I think if the if the creditors have their way, get 100 percent of the business, then it will ultimately be delisted. So it'd be interesting to see. I think this is the, the final throws of the dice for the business and see, you know, how, how it plays out, um, uh, how this, you know, this whole story really comes to an end. And whether it stays listed um, or ultimately if, uh, you know, Steinhoff is lost from the boards forever. Yeah, no, absolutely, Craig. And then finally, uh, GDP data set to come out tomorrow. Not as bleak a picture as was uh, anticipated, according to some analysts and economists. Uh, but given the pressures of load shedding uh, and uh, inflationary pressures, uh, it's not going to be an amazing figure that we're going to see come out tomorrow, will it? No, it's not going to be. I think we just like to uh, see if we can avoid that technical recession and actually get something positive from the minus 1.3% we got in the fourth quarter. Um, but, you know, if we look at uh, mining and manufacturing, that's the high frequency data that we get that was uh, positive, will be a positive contributor to GDP in quarter one. But there's a couple of unknowns like agriculture, which doesn't have high frequency data. Uh, which has a you know, small weighting in GDP, but it can have big movements that affect it one way or another. So I think at the end of the day, we're looking for something like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0.3%, just mon you know, modestly positive. Um, it will be a nice little sentiment boost, but you know, we certainly need a lot more growth than that. Yeah, and the sentiment, and I'm glad you bring that up, Craig. It's just one thought that I wanted to share with you, is the sentiment that a business and big companies have of South Africa at the moment is not great. We're seeing this with foreign investors dumping uh, government bonds, and um, unfortunately, local investors cannot fill that gap. Uh, are you concerned, as someone who watches these movements closely around the bonds that are being dumped by foreign investors, uh, or is it cyclical and we'll see uh, a healthy bounce back as things turn around? Well, I think over time we have seen a bit of a structural shift uh, lower in the in the holding um, uh, of bonds by foreigners, our, our local bonds. I think they're down to about 25% now mm. um, and they were you know well over 30 before. Uh, so you know you've seen those outflows uh, and you can read into that also then a lack of inflows uh, which puts pressure on the currency. Uh, and given that we've got such a low growth environment here, we've been talking about, you know, whether we're going to get minus or, or, or plus 0.1 percent growth uh, that doesn't attract investors. Mm. So those are, you know, bigger, longer term structural concerns for the currency and for the economy as a whole. So uh, we hope that we can uh, initiate more um, growth in this economy. We can start attracting more investment. Uh, you know, foreigners will see this as an attractive destination for investment capital. That's the real capital that we want to see. But we'd also like to see the foreigners bringing in money and uh, investing in our bond market as well. 
but we know that money can flow out just as quickly as it flowed in. Mm. We want the money that builds factories and, uh, and employs people. Now that's right, Craig. As always, I thank you very much for joining us this evening. That is Craig Pfeiffer, who's the Chief Investment Strategist at Sassfin Wealth.